Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today I'm going to be starting a new series in the AP Biology folder about the AP Biology science practices according to the AP Biology course and exam description um, that started or became effective in fall 2019. Okay, so all the other AP Biology videos on my channel are strictly content specific, right? So I go unit by unit, topic by topic, explaining a lot of the concepts and the overall knowledge that the AP Biology exam might require, okay? But something that's going to be separate here is that what, what this video series is going to be about is what does the AP Biology exam and what does College Board expect you to be able to do with this knowledge? Um, and that's a really an undervalued part of preparing for the AP exam is not only knowing what you have to know, but being able to do what you have to do on the AP exam, okay? So just like in any other science class, um, there's gonna be expected skills that you are well expected to hopefully master by the time that you take the AP exam and your AP exam measures your ability to do these things, okay? And there's six different science practices. Today in this video, we're gonna be covering science practice one and science practice two. Okay, and here they are. Here's the AP Biology course and exam description. Science practice one is concept explanation. Science practice two is visual representations. Three is questions and methods. Um, four is representing and describing data. Five is statistical tests and data analysis. And six is, of course, argumentation. Okay, so these are six different areas, and this is what we're going to be dissecting and breaking down over the course of this uh, this series of videos, okay? So like I said, we're going to get started with AP Biology Science Practices 1 and 2 today, okay? And these are probably the most simple, the most straightforward science practices, right? Um, so uh, Science Practice 1, like I said, is concept explanation, and that is defined as explaining biological concepts, processes, and models presented in a written format, and there's three different sub-practices within Science Practice 1. 1A, describe biological concepts and or processes. Um, 1B, explain biological concepts and or processes. And then 1C, explain biological concepts, processes, and or models in applied context. All right, so this is going to be a, asking you to do a lot of the same uh, stuff. And so is, so is Science Practice 2, except that's going to be more with a, well, a visual representation, a model, a diagram, a graph, that kind of stuff. All right, so let's get started. Um, this is 1.A, describe biological concepts or processes. And I know that I was just talking about how it's not, it's, it's not only important to know uh, what you have to know for the AP Biology exam, but also what you have to be able to do. And this is just kind of like knowing stuff uh, from about AP Biology or biology itself. Um, and these are kind of like the memorizing type questions or in the teacher business where you might call these low level questions um, where they just ask you to describe something like what is it, which is it, that kind of stuff. All right, and here's an example of a multiple choice question from the AP exam that's uh, defined as 1.A skills. So which two cellular organelles and eukaryotes uh, both have electron transport systems and chemiosmotic mechanisms? Um, I'm going to be putting a lot of these questions and like giving, giving an example from an AP exam of each of these uh, science practices. Uh, so if you want to um, pause the video at certain spots, so try and answer these questions yourself, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, and I'm gonna try to go through each of the answers. All right, so here's a multiple choice question. Which two cellular organelles both have an ETC? Uh, that would be the chloroplasts and mitochondria, okay? Because they got the light reactions and chloroplasts, and you have the uh, mitochondrial matrix or the mitochondrial Christi have the electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation. All right, and here's a 1.A question in the FRQ form. All right, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, you can read that on your own, right? But it says, describe three different processes by which antibiotic resistance develops in individual bacterial cells. Okay, so this question right here would be part of like a larger FRQ uh, type question. This would probably be the first part of a long FRQ. Describe three different processes, just like, all right, tell us what you know about the three different ways antibiotic resistance develops. So you might tell me about conjugation, you might tell me about transduction, you might tell me about um, transformation, that kind of stuff. Um, how does, how does uh, bacteria gain that gene to allow it to be antibiotic resistant? All right, 1B is explaining biological concepts, okay? And something that uh, a lot of kids don't understand is that the difference between asking to describe something and asking to explain something 
is that an explanation answers a question that begins with why, typically. All right, and uh, the questions on the AP exam that are going to ask you to explain stuff, uh, well, I mean, the explaining part comes from, uh, it will be like in an FRQ, but in this kind of question right here, um, a multiple choice question, all right, you have to be able to explain things in order to answer this question correctly. All right, so according to chemiosmotic theory, the energy required to move protons from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space against a concentration gradient mostly comes from, the, and those are your five options. Again, uh, pause here if you want to try and attempt this one for yourself, okay? Uh, but the answer is the hydrolysis of ATP. All right, so you have to be able to explain how ATP works in order to get a, your mind wrapped around uh, this question here. Hey, you have to know how ATP works, and you have to know that, okay, protons have to be moved from one part of the mitochondria to the next against a concentration gradient, right? So you're going to have to know it's active transport, which requires ATP, right? That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about when it comes to explaining. All right, um, here's a three-part uh, FRQ that is described as being 1.B um, explaining, right? Uh, so again, even though eh, you still have to be able to kind of explain things, even though it says describe right here. Um, but it, this is describe how active, adaptive coloration, mimicry, or behavior function as animal defenses against predation. Describe how bacteria or plants protect themselves. Okay, so that's kind of explaining, describing how something works. Um, and then comparing primary human response to secondary immune response to the same antigen. Okay, that is, you have to be able to explain things in order to answer that question again. Um, so that is going to be a 1.B FRQ. Um, and then finally for uh, science practice one, 1 1.C is explaining biological concepts, processes, and our models, but in an applied context, right? So it's going to be the, kind of the same thing as 1.B, except it's going to be in a context of a larger study or an experiment, that kind of thing. All right, so check it out. It says a species of snail. Uh, lives in the intertidal zone along the coast of New England. The dark colored variety of the species is more common in northern England, New England, while the light colored variety is more common in, in 200 miles away in southern England, and both varieties are commonly found together in central New England, which of the following best explana explains the observed distribution of the pattern of snails. Uh, so there it is again, explains the observed distribution, okay? So you're using, as I put up here, you apply your biology knowledge to explain why an example, model, or a scenario makes sense. I can't talk today. All right, so uh, if you want to try this question on your own, go ahead, give it a shot, pause the video. I'm going to keep moving on, and the answer is D. Dark colored snails absorb more solar energy and so survive more readily in the colder, colder northern waters. Okay, so you got to know something about how um, this is natural selection, adaptation, um, in order to explain why this, why this scenario with the snails and the colors of their shells makes sense. All right, I'm actually going to stop the video here. I'm going to get to science practice two um, in the next video. So I lied a little bit, but uh, we're going to try and make these little bite-sized. All right, so uh, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.